we've been working on that anthem for a month or more. Tanner brought it out and we started singing it and I'm back on the back row saying, boy, that's a bummer. How do you preach after something like that? And we had been singing that thing for several weeks when it dawned on me where that's going to fit into the scheme of things. And suddenly I realized that's not me complaining about weary. That's Jesus as he dies on the cross for me, telling the Lord he wants to come home. He's finished. Would you stand in honor of God's word as we read from Luke's gospel, chapter 19, verses 28 through 40. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And as he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Tell them, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. And they were untying the colt. And its owner asked them, why are you untying this colt? And they replied, the Lord needs it. And they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. And as he went along, people spread their cloaks along the ground. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke these disciples. I tell you the truth, Jesus replied, if they were to keep quiet, the stones themselves would cry out. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. I come from a family of six people, two brothers of which I am one and two sisters and a mom and dad and somebody was always saying, who did it? Mom would come in from work and see big pile of dishes where she, they were, the, the sink was empty when she went to work and she came back, she worked at the church, she was secretary and the treasurer and we'd get in from work and eat two or three cans of can't clean peaches, you know, I had a track practice this, the last period of the day and I'd be hungry. <laughs> and I, I'd just go rummaging through things and sometimes I would use a bowl and sometimes I'd just eat out of the can but by the time she got home about 4.30 there was a big pile of stuff and, and she would just come in and who did this? She would say. Is that familiar with you? <laughs> who did it? Maybe you've experienced this one. You've just cleaned your floors. Maybe you've got company coming over and you come home in time to make the last minute presenta uh, preparations and you open the door and there's mud that's been tracked in from God knows where because it's dry outside. But there, there is mud. Where do these kids find mud in the middle of August? And the dad, he doesn't get too excited because he doesn't really know which end of the mop to use. But the mom... She cries out, who did this? And the kids scatter like roaches in a gas room, a gas station bathroom when you turn the light on. Scatter. Who did it? Now here's, here's an illustration I plan to use. And boy, did this one kind of ring true with me because I did it last weekend. How about dried sugar water on the linoleum? I told you, if you were here last Sunday, I was, I was dressed, getting ready to walk out the door, thought I'd get a, little, get a little glass of milk, and I pulled the milk and the sweet tea, two quarts worth, fell out on the floor, splattered all over me and the house and the whole nine yards, and I had to clean that thing up, and I knew exactly who did it. It was a little more fun when I could blame somebody else. I did it. <laughs> who did this? <laughs> I don't know whether a smart man would use this illustration or not, but this is my life growing up. 
the two brothers in the back seat on our way on a trip. It's a, it's a, it's a, a long trip and somebody in the front seat smells a strange odor. And my father says, who did it? And my sister in the very back, it was a station wagon. She just laughing because we're in trouble and she didn't do it. Different questions have different types of answers depending on exactly what you're talking about. The question for today is this, who did it? Who did it? Well, let's just kind of get into it this way. Who won the Civil War? It was an army, which army? You should know, both of them were here for a time before you were born, the, the North won, right? Which church is the largest in America? Now that's kind of complicated. If you're talking about the largest Christian church, you get one answer. If you're talking about the largest Protestant church, you're talking about another answer. Growing up in South Central Kentucky, I figured the Methodists and Baptists and probably the Baptists were number one. And then I was kind of surprised to discover the number one Christian denomination in America today is the Roman Catholic Church. And there were only two families of those when I was growing up and I never saw them being all that catholic -y. But there's a whole lot of them in America. The number one Christian church, the largest denomination in America is the Roman Catholic Church. The largest Protestant denomination is the Baptist Church. How about this? Who started the Methodist Church? You know that probably. I've been to seminary. I have to hold my hands over my heart when you say John Wesley, <laughs> a person. How about this one? Who likes chocolate? Yeah, I thought you'd like that. Just about everybody. <laughs> All right, now let's get to the serious question of the day. Who killed him? Who did this to Jesus? Palm Sunday is so bittersweet because we know what's coming. Jesus knew what was coming. The crowd didn't have a clue who killed Jesus. A few years ago, people accused Mel Gibson of blaming the Jews. Well, I don't know whether he did or not, but people have blamed the Jews for that forever and ever. Stephen accused the Jews in Acts chapter 7, verse 21. But they didn't have the authority to do it. They wanted him dead, but they couldn't do it. They had not the power to do it. Some even thought Jesus des desired to become a martyr. A martyr for the cause. There were those who wanted Jesus dead. And the Jewish leaders, a religious group, they wanted him dead. But who scourged him? Not the Jews. Who hammered the nails? Not the Jews. Who had the power to hang someone on the cross? That was the Romans. So maybe it wasn't the Jews. Maybe it was the Romans who killed Jesus. They were all there, mixed in, mushed in together. They're all in the story, aren't they? But it gets complicated. Who willingly got on a donkey and rode into town with all of these branches waving and went into the temple and confronted all the religious leaders and spoke boldly in front of Roman guards and anybody who would listen for the next few days. Who did that? Jesus himself did that. So he allowed it to happen. I'm getting ready to drop a big shoe here. The Jews wanted him dead. The Romans had the authority and the ability to kill him. Jesus used his free will to go into that arena knowing what was going to happen, but who made it necessary? Why did it have to happen? Who's guilty here? Me. Yes. It is I. It is I. If you want to be real fair about it, we did it. And we weren't.
weren't even there. He did it for us. The Holy Lamb of God took our sins on his shoulder because he loved us so much more than we love him. We're the guilty party. We're the reason he came and the reason that he preached and the reason that he had to be so patient. The reason that he died and the reason that Easter makes all the difference in the world. Some people like to debate, can God raise someone from the dead? You know, if you want to throw out all the Bible, you, you're left with this logical question with no answer. If you throw out all the evidence, what are you going to do? But Easter is incredibly powerful. Because if God can raise one man, then he can raise another. And if he can raise Lazarus, then you better believe he can raise his own son. And if he can raise Lazarus, and if he can raise his own son, then he can raise you, and you, and you, and hallelujah, he can raise me. The most guilty in this whole story is us, and we weren't even born yet. He died because of us. If you must blame someone, Hitler blamed the Jews. You saw how that worked out in the 20th century. If you must blame someone, blame those enslaved in sin for which he came to die. Blame yourself. Why must the world never forget Holy Week? Because in seven days, Jesus went from being a regional celebrity to the resurrected Savior of the world. And the world simply must know what happened because it's our only hope. Hope. You have hope. I want you to remember this week, don't just go from Palm Sunday to the resurrection and you know, miss everything in between. Remember what happened tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. Don't you ever forget Friday. In, in Hallsville, Kentucky, all the churches, Methodists and Catholics and Baptists and free will this and independent that, uh, we all got really, really close to each other. We did food pantries and did ministries and things and somebody built this life-size green cedar cross. It had Latin inscription above where the Jesus head would be. And the game plan was to haul that thing through town and up a hill and drop it on the edge of a cliff on the edge of town. Oh, that first year, I saw grown men, farmers, burly men, pick up an end of that cross and look around like, can I get out of here? I don't wanna lift this. And we hauled it for a mile and a half to put it in the edge of town. And we, as we were going up town hill, Hallsville is a wonderful place, it's like Louisa. The police go before and the police go behind and Katie bar the door if somebody doesn't like it. They protect us and, and 40 or 50 of us walked that cross taking turns. It took all of us. It was so heavy. That cross was so heavy. And 30 or 40 of us and our arms would get tired and someone would slip in and take your place. And we got that cross up on that cliff and put it in the ground and lit it so no one would forget. This is what happened. The cars parted on Town Hill, much bigger deal than Town Hill right here. And we were walking up that hill singing whatever we had in common. Somebody from out of town who was going down to the river to cross over in Indiana, their, their windows were down. And as we crossed, the wife poked or punched or something, prodded her husband. And I heard her say, honey, this is the day he did that. Don't you ever forget what he did for you because it makes all the difference. He gave himself for us. Hallelujah. And three people are about to give themselves to him.